Hello there. I have in front of me the Alien Tech T80 T80P smart soldering iron. This is a newish uh, portable small soldering iron. It came out sometime in 2023, I think under a year ago or so. Um, and uh, it's similar in some ways to the pine sole. So I have, I have the very popular pine sole in this case right here just to uh, refresh people that aren't familiar with this design. Um, it's a nice little portable soldering iron. You have a, a user interface with a few buttons for, uh, for input and you have uh, power connections on the back, USB-C and a barrel connection. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility here and what you can supply. Um, the pine sole, you know, I've been a, a champion of this for a while. I like it, um, but it's not perfect. There's some things that I'm not a big fan of, in particular, these uh, cartridges or tips. So they are proprietary. Uh, pine sole calls them uh, TS100, uh, Tango Sierra 100. And uh, they have this little set screw, which is, is kind of a pain because it's not toolless. I know it's only one screw, not a big deal, but uh, when you know when you're there and you're in the um, you're under the footwell of a car and you're doing you know audio or a remote start and you have to change the tip and you lose that screw. It's just not a good day. So um, not a big fan of the of the tooled uh, changeover. But overall, it is a really good iron and I do like it. So let's take a look at what Alien Tech is providing. So this is fairly new. Um, and uh, what I do like is, right off the bat, are these cartridges. Now they call them T80 and T80P, but the T80 is the equivalent of a JBC Charlie 210, C210. So that is their, their mini, uh, mini um, cartridge, mini tip. And that means that it's interchangeable with the JBC. This is essentially a JBC clone. Um, and then the T80P is the equivalent of the C245, the standard size tip. Um, so I, I like that right off the bat. Um, pretty industry standard, so if you already are into the JBC ecosystem or JBC clone ecosystem, uh, you don't need to rebuy your cartridges, which is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, there's a nice little, nice little package here, um, you know, approvals, some of the specs up here. Um, tells you which one I got. I got the T80, I didn't go for the T80P. I wanted the, uh, the mini, um, but let's go ahead and pop this open. So you are immediately greeted with uh, this little plate here. It looks like it's probably, it's pretty thin. It's probably 22 gauge steel. And uh, they have this uh, little punched out, looks like it was made in like a strip it machine um, where you can pop this down and use that as like a stand for the iron. I'm probably never gonna use this and this is probably gonna go right in the trash, but it is nice that they included that. Um, you also get the manual written in, um, there is English instructions in here. Um, along with the data table, how to use the uh, how to use the menu, um, so on and so forth, and uh, then we get to the iron itself. Uh, so let's pop this out. You know, nice little form factor here. Uh, immediately, you can see that it comes with a, a cover, which I really like. It's a nice little detail, but details matter. And uh, yeah, these tips are, they're quite small. Again, these are like the C210s. Um, uh, here's a uh, Heiko T12, just to give you a size comparison between the two. Now, obviously like the T12 is going to be better for general purpose soldering. If you have, um, you know, you're joining copper wire, that's, you know, 14, 16 gauge, or, um, if you have a big copper pour, so on and so forth. You know, it also works fine for little components. Um, but if you want to get in, you know, something very small, very narrow, very portable, uh, these, these mini cartridges are pretty slick for that. So, you know, here's the blade style that I have on here now. I did purchase a, a couple of extras. So, you know, they sell this as a kit. I think I paid around 40 US dollars uh, with shipping from AliExpress for this kit. Um, not bad, you know, that, that's a pretty reasonable price, I think, for what you get. Uh, you can also get just the iron itself with a single tip for around 30 US dollars, so pretty reasonable. Um, and then in this uh, cardboard box is a USB cable. It's an A to C. I'm not gonna use that because I have uh, uh, C to C cables here that I'm going to be using instead. So uh, with that, let's get out the USB-C cable. This is hooked up to a 100 watt um, USB PD power supply. Uh, so we pop that in. 
you know, immediately greeted with a logo here. And they're, they're just telling you in the, um, uh, to press this button here to get started. So this is uh, A and B is how they call them out in the manual. Um, and they give you access to uh, the user interface in the menu. And look how quick that heats up. Isn't that fantastic? Uh, very, very fast. Um, now again, this is a 100 watt uh, USB-C. So we're not even uh, maxing out the power supply's potential here, but um, you know, really nice um, in terms of uh, how quick that heats up. And you can see here, it kind of shows you like your, um, uh, basically where the, the PID is holding it. So, you know, there's, there's a PID function meeting set point in the, uh, the cartridge to try to maintain the 350C here that we have it set to. And uh, you can see how much power is going in. So if we take a little bit of uh, solder here, and we just put a little bit on the tip just to wet that, you're probably gonna see See the power consumption went up a hair? You see that? Yep, because that's, uh, you know, obviously we're putting um, solid metal on there and it's going to have to go through that phase change. So it's, it's dumping, in, dumping in heat to make that happen. So pretty cool that you can watch that happen in real time. If you want to shut it off, you just hold down B for like a couple seconds. That's it. And now it's going into uh, a sleep mode. Eventually, I think it bottoms out around uh, 50 C. Um, or you can just unplug it. Um, you know, so it's just going through like an ambient cool down at this point. Um, there's also, I'm gonna boot this back up. There we go. So 100% power input, boom, there we go. And you can see, look at that, overshot, the PID drops to zero, overshoot, undershoot, you know, we're, we're kind of bouncing around the PID. Looks like we have this, um, I don't think you can set the PID function. Maybe you can, I uh, haven't dug that far into it, but um, it, it, it's pretty good, right? I mean, there's a little bit of overshoot, but it, you know, it quickly course corrects and comes back in. So it's, it is a bit of an underdamped PID, but that's okay. You know, we're, we're getting the set point pretty accurately, pretty quickly. Um, I would rather have it uh, a little aggressive than, than too passive, you know, and then you're, you're not able to, um, to keep that solder melted if you're on, you know, like a big copper pour, or you're working with, uh, you know, larger diameter, uh, higher gauge wire or something like that. So, um, or thicker gauge wire rather. So that, you know, it's overall a pretty good feature. Now, would I use this iron if I'm doing, uh, you know, car audio and I'm soldering uh, 16 gauge wire? Uh, probably not. Um, you know, it's, this is just not gonna have the oomph that you want. You know, I'd go with uh, something with a bit more power, but for small components, it is perfect for that. You know, if you're working on SMD components and things like that that are PCB mounted, um, it uh, it can work great. So, like here's a just a little prototype board that I have from a project, um, just to show you. So this is a little bit larger. I mean, it's not a giant copper pour, but we have like a little bit bigger pour here. And uh, you see, you know, we took a bit of a dive in temperature, quickly caught up. But yeah, I mean, it it melts it no problem. Look at that. We have really good flow and looks great. I mean, obviously no problem for these smaller pads, right? We can just go in, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, I, I like the performance. I'm just gonna clean this tip off camera. Uh, yeah, so what else do you have? You have a menu here if you hold, I believe it's both buttons for a couple seconds. We go into another menu. Yep, there we go. So. Uh, I believe the B button enters the menu, so exit, right? It times out, of course, too. So if we hit that, uh, oh, nope, that, I'm sorry, that goes down. So you hold to go into um, that, that menu. See, yeah, there we go. So this is showing us our input voltage, our temperature. It looks like it goes into standby mode when you're in the menu, probably a good thing. Um, we can continue scrolling down. Uh, that's the temperature step. So if you go into temperature step, you can set the, uh, the step at which you can you can change the set point temperature. So if, you know if you want more or less granularity. Uh, sorry that it's a bit hard to see on the camera here. Uh, sleep temperature. So that is the temperature it dives to when you put it back into sleep mode, or if it goes idle. Um, what else we have? Sleep time. So timeout. Uh, standby timer. I'm sorry, that is very hard to see. That's the volume. It aggressively wants to exit this menu. 
So I should probably adjust. Oh no, you can't adjust menu timeout, can you? And uh, power trim. You know, if you want to uh, uh, trim down, like basically put a ceiling on the power, your temperature unit, if you want Fahrenheit or Celsius, your language, this came English by default, which was nice, screen rotation. So that's actually kind of cool, screen rotation, uh, if you're left-handed, right? You can, uh, that'll help you out there. Um, PO heat, let's see what this does. Oh, uh, that's pretty basic. And uh, temperature calibration, I don't have my calibration here. Um, it is in storage, so we're not going to use this, but you can, of course, put like an offset in there. And then factory restore. If you completely screw up your settings, you can go back and let's see what version we're on. We are on version 1.0.5, and like I said, I have the T80. And there you go. So overall, we have a nice little piece of kit. Um, I like this. Uh, I like this better than the Pine Soul, to be honest. This is probably my new go-to as a... Um, Nice little portable soldering iron. I'm probably not going to use this too much on my desk. You know, I have the, the Heiko workstation here. Um, but, you know, applications where I'm doing something in the garage, um, I'm in another room, I'm going over to a friend's house, uh, you know, I need something on the go. This is great. This is my, my new favorite, and I love the fact that it uses JVC clone tips. So I uh, hope this was um, informational. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have questions, feel free to reach out in the comments. Take care, guys. Thank you very much.